Hi everyone, I'm Caitlin and I'm the Clients Relationship Manager at MoWorks. Today I'm chatting with Matt from OpenCorp. Thanks for your time, Matt. Would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're currently working on? Yeah, hi Caitlin, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, so I'm one of the founders and directors at OpenCorp. OpenCorp's a group of, uh, of companies that specialize in property investment services. Oh, I run our managed fund that, uh, that acquires residential property and holds the property for uh, rental income. And also we're involved in the acquisition side for our property investment services, um, sourcing stock, planning where, uh, where we should be buying properties and, uh, and yeah, just sort of, I guess, doing the research, monitoring the market and, and looking ahead. How are the current situations impacted you and your business? Yeah, okay. That's a, it's a good question. So I guess one of the great things that the government did uh, very quickly was to speak to banks about um, providing leniency for customers through this period. And even before they announced JobKeeper, uh, it was the first thing they did was speak to the banks. And I think once that announcement came out that banks were not going to be uh, pursuing people who were in arrears and would negotiate with people to have what they call mortgage holidays. It's not necessarily they're waiving the mortgage. They're actually just deferring when you, when you pay interest. Um, but that takes a lot of, that took a lot of pressure off, uh, off the market and off, um, I guess, off people. And one of the, the biggest triggers for a property downturn is when there are distressed, distressed sellers. So if people are selling in a hurry and we call it a fire sale, so they're trying to sell it really quickly because they're defaulting on their debt, then they have to take whatever offer they get. And normally that means that the price prices drop. And if there's a lot of properties going into the market at the same time, obviously with supply and demand, that means prices go down as well. So essentially they've just put a floor under the market. Nobody's really selling properties. There's very few on the market at the moment for sale. There are still people buying properties. It's actually a, quite a good time to be buying uh, for those that have got a stable income and obviously feel that they have the confidence and comfort that they'll be able to continue to pay their, their mortgage and obviously want to use this opportunity to get in while there's less competition. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, so it's kind of, it's kind of stabilized the market uh, there. We also see obviously on the other side in property management that there was a, a lot of uncertainty straight away um, before JobKeeper was announced. I think there was a few erroneous uh, announcements by the government to say that they'd put a mor moratorium on evictions without providing any detail of what that meant. Yeah. Uh, our, our phones started ringing off the hook with people saying they couldn't pay the rent anymore. And uh, when they were asked to fill out paperwork, 95% of them had, didn't have the time to be able to spend filling in the paperwork to demonstrate they couldn't pay the rent. So, uh, so the problem went away pretty quickly. Um, but, uh, but yeah, obviously JobKeepers made it quite easy now for people to be able to service, uh, service their rent, rental payments. Um, and also with regard to the, um, I guess, the, the evictions thing, there's a lot more detail now that's being provided around that. So people have to prove hardship. They can't just opt out and say that they're not paying the rent. Yeah. And that's really helped as well. But uh, nonetheless, we've, we're seeing, I think it's about a 600% increase on our phone calls for our property management team as opposed to normal. Yeah. Just from tenants who are trying to work out where they stand landlords who are trying to work out where they stand and uh, yeah, it's funny one of those times where a lot of businesses are getting quieter our property management team we've had to put on some contractors we've had to second people from other parts of our group that are a little bit quieter and move them into property management so we could over service the clients there apart from having you know having to bring on board more property managers is there anything else you're currently doing to pivot or adapt your business to the current conditions Obviously, a lot of us working from home. I think that's part of the course for a lot of lot of people in Australia at the moment. Um, but even in property management, where normally we would do an open for inspection, you'd have twenty people hopefully go through a, a home on in the thirty minute block and lease it out that day. Now we're obviously having to do a lot more work before we take any person through the property. The only the successful applicant will generally go through a property now, and they can either go through that remotely on their own, or so they go out and up the keys and go through it on their own or they go through with one property manager. Uh, so that obviously makes it tougher. It's a bit slower to lease properties there as a result. And our property investment advisory side, a lot, lot more video conferences with clients. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and I think, I guess, just little, little changes that we're making, even things, in, again, in property management, sorry to jump around a little bit, 
Sorry. but looking at do we do we put different locks on doors in the future so that we have mechanically coded locks that um, that we can give out the code for somebody who needs to go through the property and we can change the code after they leave yeah. without somebody having to go and hand over keys or go out of their way to pick up keys. Uh, so yeah, just lots of things like that where we're thinking through how do we improve convenience in the future um, and how do we improve our systems uh, yeah. as a result of this. Do you expect a big change in your offering after this once, once everything's, you know, returns to normal? Uh, a little bit. I mean, one of the other things we've, we've done, even in the short term, um, has been to offer new buyers an additional uh, rent guarantee. So our business offers a rent guarantee for, for new customers, and we generally give them a one-year rental guarantee. So we've extended that out for up to five years now for customers, um, albeit that over the next five years, this COVID-19 impact will be well and truly gone in two or three years' time. Yeah. Uh, so I think... Being able to offer that or other, um, I guess, have a, a range of different offers that we can provide to customers depending on their needs, I think will be better at being a retailer in that regard. Um, a lot of property companies don't realise that they're a retailer, uh, but, but we are. We're obviously selling a product and it might be fairly homogenous in terms of how it's packaged, um, but there's always different nuances that you can, you can adapt to and, and help customers with. Um, and sometimes I guess customers just need a little bit more peace of mind in one area. And, uh, and obviously at the moment, one of those things that people need peace of mind is that the tenant will pay, will be able to pay rent in the future. Or if they stop paying rent, they lose their job. Somebody will be paying rent for them. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what the future will hold in that regard, what, what changes there'll be and what other needs people have in the future. But I guess it'd be good if we can continue to adapt um, adapt to their needs but yeah I think I mean looking at the the market as well uh, in our industry um, the, particularly in, in property management again I'll, I'll use that as an example but I think there's a really good opportunity for consolidation there there's a lot of um, businesses around Australia that are generally fairly small in property management teams without sort of uh, I guess big business systems so uh, I think there's a really good opportunity there to, to be moving in that market and starting to look at growth. Uh, in fact, we're looking at some acquisitions there at the moment as well. And I guess that's one of the things we try to try to do uh, very early in this thing was to make sure we short up our, our business balance sheet, make sure that we're in a good operating space, uh, get on top of our own customer needs. And knowing that once we got on top of our customer needs and we're delivering great service, then we'd be in a really good position to capitalise on opportunities that arose in the market. And I guess these are the best times for those that are able to, to look at that um, because there's obviously a lot of people who don't want to look at opportunities because they just kind of, they're nervous and scared of, um, I, I guess, their own business uh, position. Uh, so those that can generally will grow in these times. And I think that's probably going to be a bit of a consolidation play um, in that industry in particular, potentially even finance broking um, as well. So, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know if that's common across other industries, but yeah, that's sort of our view. Well, thank you for your time today, Matt, um, and for sharing no, okay. your, your predictions on property investment post COVID-19. I'm looking forward to seeing um, OpenCorp's new brand as well that we're developing in all your new documents. Um, yeah. Looking forward to see, seeing that. Um, go live as well yeah no that's fantastic and the stuff obviously that you guys have been working on with us um, in terms of our market region reports for customers and uh, in our research report um, profiles that we're going to roll out um, I think our whole team's really excited about and yeah looking forward to, to getting those live and uh, unfortunately we might not be able to print them and hand over yeah. printed copies to customers straight away but uh, but certainly it's a it's an awesome I guess, step up from what, what we were providing previously. I think we'll be a market leader in that space. So, yeah. yeah. So, thanks for the work. And even um, also to my works for the support through uh, through this period as, as obviously our, our team has been, uh, been bogged down on, on various things and your team's worked really hard to, uh, to tie into to our needs. So, yeah, thank you.